Canadian-born educator, Dr. Lawrence J. Peter, once said, if you don't know where you're going, you will probably end up somewhere else. Dr. Peter, who died in 1990, was most famous for the Peter Principle, in which he stated, in a hierarchy, every employee tends to rise to his level of incompetence. In time, every post tends to be occupied by an employee who is incompetent to carry out his duties. Work is accomplished by those employees who have not yet reached their level of incompetence. In general, the Peter Principle said that anything that works will be used in progressively more challenging applications until it fails. One is most tempted to use what has worked before, or what seems to have worked before, even when it may exceed its effective scope, which leads me to wonder how many of us as teachers in the classroom are using what seems to work, but is actually backfiring on us, which leads me back to if you don't know where you're going, you probably will end up somewhere else. This is what the teaching methodology that we will be learning about in this course is all about. It is called Understanding by Design, or UBD for short. And it was developed by Grant Wiggins and Jay McTeague and published by the ASCD, formerly known as the Association for Supervision and Curriculum Development, in 2005. If you're interested in learning more about Wiggins and McTeague, you can find it in the resources section of this course. In basic terms, there are four key elements to UBD. One, what is our desired outcome for our students? What is the big, and I mean B-I-G, big idea that is encompassed in this outcome? What is an enduring understanding that can be said and thought about this outcome? Two, what deep probing or essential questions can be asked? Three, what are various activities your students can do in order to learn the intended. And four, how will your students show you, themselves, and others that they've learned it? That's UBD in a nutshell. For the purposes of our course, we're going to use the overarching topic of Tikkun Olam, repairing the world, as an example to further discuss the concepts of enduring understandings, essential questions, and something we call facets or evidences of learning and presenting the learned work. Think, what do you see in the photograph here? What do you think the intended goal outcome of the learning is? What is its big idea? Have you ever gotten that in your gut feeling where the tears well up for no apparent reason? Was it a song that got you? Maybe a piece of music, a poem, a piece of writing, a thought, prayer, creed? the expression of which was so meaningful, so resonant, that you felt it in your gut to your bones. That's what a big idea is. It is something that, in Nechama Moskowitz's words, quote, makes the angels sing. A big idea never goes away, is true for all time, and returns to your thoughts throughout your life. Can you think of any off the top of your head? A favorite big idea of mine is that without freedom, there's no education, and without education, there's no freedom. Think. Where can we learn about this big idea? Passover, of course, the book of Exodus, the Haggadah. But how do we wrap our heads around something this big? How do we teach an idea that big? The answer is in creating enduring understandings. An enduring understanding, or EU as it is often called, is a sentence or two that offers a particular proposition about a big idea. A good EU is characterized as one that includes being enduring, being a big idea, having lasting value beyond the classroom, a core process or idea at the heart of a discipline, abstract, being counterintuitive, and is often mister, has misunderstood concepts. Whatever an enduring understanding is, it is embedded in facts, skills, and activities that can be lifelong. Enduring understandings express what we want to learn about. Here are three examples of enduring understandings that are found in the URJ High Curriculum, which is also UBD. The first EU is about the big idea of Tikkun Olam and Gimilut Hasadim for first or second graders. The second and third EUs are for older elementary students. As you read these EUs, think of them as goals or outcomes for your students. 
what kinds of questions need to be asked and investigated in order for the students to really be able to grapple with the proposition that's in the EU.